meeting to order at 601. <laughs> First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? None, please. Great. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of December 16, 2019. There's a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So fast. Next, we have community concerns. Do we have any community concerns today? Seeing none, we we'll move to liquor control. Sarah. Yes. So I hear a motion to move into liquor control. I have a motion to move into liquor control. Second. Any second? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in liquor control. So there are two renewal forms, um, one for Slim Point, which is Riverbend Market, and the other for Walgreens, which is Rite Aid, second class renewals. I'm sure Keith emailed me back. He has no issues with either. No issues. Probably here. Rich. No issues. I'm going to approve the renewal applications for Riverbend Market and Rite Aid. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Does the motion come out of the control? Second. Okay, motion and a second. second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. <laughs> Next, we have old business. Nothing new with old business. We jump right to new business. I like this pace. It's I'm, good. <laughs> I'm doing like Brian would. That's good. All right. Number one, discuss adding rail trail as a non-binding article on the town warning. This is a lot of questions we reserve or receive um, from some supporters of the uh, the rail trail. They asked. They're asking council. I think all about the rail trail, but this is a non-binding article in town meeting. Completely and totally up to the select board. It's fine for us to put it on there to be discussed. Exactly. Would this be, would this be discussed from the floor or not off straight ballot? It would be from the floor. Okay. A few years ago, um, the select board um, yeah. asked if I had permission for the town to put non binding articles like this on, on the uh, town meeting warrant. So it would be from the floor. Do you have any comment, Brian? I don't know. I think it's a great thing. Any other comments? Sounds like we're going to get a could get a lot of money if we started this from the government too. Yeah, grant I think those grants are what paid for the construction that's already been out there. Yes. That was mostly federal money. Yeah. Do we need a motion for this? No, you really don't. Um, I'll just include it on the warning, and when you approve the warning, you'll approve it. So. If it's Board's happy with it. I'll just put their language on it as an article. Sure. Right. So then, this is a, a non-binding to support. Correct. The completion of the Lamar Valley Rail Trail. Correct. Okay. It's completely, totally non-binding. Yeah. Chris, Judy. No, I just no, totally, yeah. Okay. All right. Next, discuss adding Morristown Conservation Commission as an article in the town warning. Iran. Iran. We're looking for a half cent on the dollar. And I'll be Sunday at town meeting. So this should come from on the floor? From okay. the floor? This will be from the floor? Yeah. <coughs> I just I think everybody should be clear yeah, about what you're yeah. what you're requesting. Are you requesting this to be put on the um, are you requesting the select board to put it on the warning? Yeah. Or yeah. yeah, just or is it a petition or no <clears throat> I put it on a petition because I started getting some signatures for one cent and that's more than I really we really were looking for. So I just want to put it on the uh, at the town meeting warren as a half cent on the dollar, just similar to how a rescue and the fire truck people do it. 
Ron, what would the money generated be used for? Well, um, we have uh, one of the projects that we did this last summer was to uh, uh, make a crossing that might creep up at the Zebra Metal, Zebra Metal parking lot over to Morristown for us. But looking ahead, I'd uh, like to get more involved in uh, conservation movements in critical areas. Uh, sometime in the future, we may, the town may get four acres up there in the green lot. Uh, as you've seen those stakes on the corner there, we're getting four acres on the low side. I may have to acquire a little bit from <coughs> Mrs. Greaves because the line goes right through a wetland, and I want to try to keep out of it. Uh, I think Mark Clark Park is looming into our future, and we'll be using some funds down there to develop that into a, uh, a better uh, attractive uh, attraction. Mm -hmm. but, so is this for like one year? This for this year. Right. <laughs> I know we're talking about money, and, right. and I'll stand up there, say a uh, microphone to town meeting, and see what they all have to say. How much would a half a cent generate? About 30000 33, yeah. 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 About 30, 32, 33000 Yeah, about 33000 so what is the process then for doing this? Well, that, this is kind of unusual because this is this is different from the nonprofit association. Yeah. Morris, Morristown Conservation Commission, of course, is part of town government. Um, so you know, the select board can add an article to to do this, just like we have for highway and fire um, to raise that one penny. Once that one penny is raised, I think the bigger difference in some of the other funds that we do within our general budget, this money. And I don't have the article. This money can only be used for the purposes that are defined in the article. You can't use it for something else. So like the sidewalk. Like sidewalks, you can't. You know, it's whatever is defined in that article. So you know, I must get. Could I just see the article real quick? Ron, do you guys have a like a general plan, like a <laughs> ten-year plan, or? <coughs> You know, plans arise. We did help contribute a little bit of money to the Brownsville Conservation Project itself, thanks to the select board. We uh, used a thousand dollars of our funds to conserve right. 750 acres over there. But opportunities arise, and sometimes you can't plan for those. I mentioned some of the others that are in the works. Like Clark Park, this is, if you aren't familiar with it, is down on B Street. Yeah. Uh, a fire range goal, if it could be done, <coughs> there's one parcel of land that remains up near the Morristown Forest that's privately owned. Would be kind of nice if it was included as part of the Morristown Forest. So, I mean, those are the kind of things we dream about, but we aren't all millionaires. <laughs> so we, we have, I'm probably speaking out of turn, but we have a recreation committee, and I'm wondering if in the future it might be advantageous for the um, Conservation Commission to kind of join forces with us and join us in planning out some recreation um, plans. That's not a problem. I talk to the recreation people once in a while. You, uh, you're more involved with uh, summer camps and things like that. Well, um, that's that's part of it. We're really expanding and looking at our recreation facilities and how we can best use them yeah. in the town. I think we'd be looking like as part of the planning, like Clark Park. What, 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 I have got a list of things that the Recreation Committee submitted years ago, but right. this, this thing's been sitting on the table, but I think it's going to be moving shortly. Because uh, the Green River thing is over for now. <laughs> the Green River re Reservoir? That's what? The Green River Reservoir. Green River Reservoir thing. That, uh, 
Unfortunately, the war in life didn't get there uh, successfully to the court on that. They're trying to talk to the war and light. They want to diverge of non-productive land. So it might be another opportunity of other things to look at that uh, would be more beneficial for public use. So this wouldn't be a one a one shot deal. This would be a continuous. So each year you'd be getting it. It's just for this year. Just for this year. For now. Oh, okay. All right. Just for this morning. All right. Next year I may pedal around and uh, get the signatures. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think conserving land and I highly agree with Judy and any partnership we can do as far as you know, leveraging the land that we do have. Um, but I understand that acquiring additional land or conserving more land requires funding. Uh, so I'm, I'm not opposed. I think I'd like to see a general like, plan, a general more plan. Uh, but I think, you know, if, if there can be something delivered, I think that it's yeah. fine. Uh, well, you know, we, we've got money there now. But it's tied up in CDs. It's making money. It's not... Mm -hmm. Uh, being lost, but so we, have a note, we have an idea what the balances are in our forest land fund, which I think can be used for what Ron is talking about. Yep. There's roughly seventeen thousand dollars in okay. our conservation commission fund. We have about thirty-four thousand. Some of it's in um, investment accounts, and some of it's in ready cash. So it's a total of about fifty-one thousand between the two funds. But when we're talking about land purchases, that doesn't go that far, really. Things don't come cheap. Though. Right. You yep. start building up a little bit. When, when you, I think mean, maybe um, Dan can answer this. So, when the Conservation Commission spends money, do they have to come back to the select board or do they have discretion? Well, it's just like the, the rest of the town purchasing policy. You see, you know, if they see something like they've gone to trainings and stuff, I sign off on that. So, if there's anything you know that they want to buy, I think um, even the, the money went to Brownsville Conservation. And I came with yeah. yeah. things like that you know, that I see are a little bit different or outside okay. that policy than comes to the select board. So, typically speaking, you know, if you want to buy land, that's a select board decision whether to buy land or not. I wouldn't approve that. If you know, we did the we did the grant for the the, the, the brook crossing. You know, that was all kind of what I would call routine stuff. You know, we didn't necessarily come to the board for that. But, um, you know, so stuff like that, yeah. If somebody's going to buy land where ultimately the select board's going to be responsible for, it's coming to you guys. Okay. If we're doing small projects up in the town for us, then I'm using my discretion to say, yes, go ahead and do it. If that makes sense. Yes. Long, long range, someday the, the, uh, the gravel pit <clears throat> will need some. Uh, Monies to make improvements there for recreational use. You know, that's, that's a long range thing. When the, when the gravel is depleted, it's got to be reshaped into something that's uh, usable and that's where some money could go. Conservation doesn't necessarily have to be for acquiring land, it might be for protecting land. Mm -hmm, right. You know? Yeah, for the, or the yeah, area that was the former gravel pit area. Yeah. I think where I've got an issue, Ron, more than anything, is the amount of money this is going to generate. And I think the long-term intent here is for it to recur year after year. Maybe not a half cent every year, maybe a quarter cent the next year or three quarters of the year after or whatnot. But it's the, the thought of uh, building the kind of money toward a purchase of, let, let's use land purchases, because you're talking about a, the four or eight piece of uh, Washington Highway and perhaps entering into a contract to buy land there or purchasing easements to protect different pieces, those costs can be high enough that even sitting on the board, I wouldn't be comfortable with a board member making a decision to approve that kind of purchase. I think the purchase would have to go to the taxpayers as a whole. So to have the money just sitting, you know, generating every year, adding to the tax base and, and, and uh, their tax burden, I should say, the, the dollar amounts to me are not the fitting of the intent of the program. If the intent of the program is to do the projects you're talking about, I can see us working on the budget for the Conservation Commission to increase that to a certain extent for those projects. But 30, uh, $33,000 this year, 
this year and if it continues the year after. I mean, the taxpayers are very generous with these things, especially in the town report where we have a very slim margin of voters that show up at the town at, at town meeting. In all likelihood, this would probably pass because nobody wants to talk against conservation. We all love it. We love open land, but I think thirty-five, thirty-three thousand dollars is a lot of money. The debt is a one-time thing, which you like to May have to, if we want more money next year, might be going out and getting a few money so we could. Uh, and I started out with that with one cent, but I disagree. We didn't need over 60,000, so I started back for a half. And I'm looking to support from what court for this one time. Well, it's not that we decide to have it be that. You we, we're giving you the permission to take it before town meeting and, and it gets discussed as an article. Yeah. You know, and for me, if there's 200 people at town meeting, which we all know it's getting less and less all the time, that's still a lot more people than yeah, us as a board. And the people that care are there. I think it's sad there's only 200 people, but still, that's a, that's a, a big cross section of the public that cares and votes and I'm, I'm comfortable with putting that in front of the people and let them decide. You know, I think that's what you're asking us for. Mm -hmm. That was my intent. Mm -hmm. I would have had to anyway if I went and got 200 right. speakers. Right, right. <clears throat> I'd rather see it be on Australian ballot if we're going to do that so that more people get a chance to vote on it. I think it's really hard to, to describe it. I think you, you may even have a hard time articulating it in front of town meeting. I think it's <laughs> even harder to have it be an Australian ballot issue, unless there was lots of advertising and you're not going to do that for, for an article like this. My intent was that town meeting. I attend that, and we usually have a set up over I know the you corner. Do. And uh, so we, we'll be there to uh, Brett Tim, and he'll be there to help me relay the message. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you guys think? I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe you should think about doing a quarter percent, a quarter cent instead of half. If you want to change it to quarter, I'll be agreeable. But this time, the next year, I may go for more. If See, I don't need, think it's up need. to us to decide. I think what we're going to do is give you permission to go out there. I, I don't right. care. I'd, I'd cross it out the, the half cent. If he's going to there and discuss what he wants to do. Right. And it and could be changed people. on the floor, right? Right, yeah. and they can do that, I guess. There, there does need to be an amount on the article. So but it could, it could be amended from the floor. But it could be amended from the floor. Which, yeah. And they might, the floor might do that just like we're talking about. I think it's premature because I think, I agree with Eric, that you come to us and, and you budget, and we'll, you know, we've always helped you. And as far as I go, you've got enough to do quite a bit right there. <coughs> I know you're going to use it, which means you're not going to earn interest, but we didn't put it in there. I don't think to earn interest. We put it in there for you to use. It doesn't get spent. It's uh, right off. Like I said, didn't see me making money. And, uh, it's not an awful lot. And like I said, things that might come up might require more money without yeah. going out to the public for more than what is currently being banked. So we don't need to decide this tonight, correct? I mean, the warning doesn't need to go out until the end of January? Pretty close, because I've got to start drafting it soon. Um, you know, I, I would say that, if anything, of course, later in the meeting, there's got to be a, a time for everybody to get back together and decide that so I can draft I think right now, in our schedule says we were going to approve the warning on the... Uh, you're going to sign the warning January 27th, but so the review and finalization was January 21st of latest. Huh. So two weeks from tonight. Two weeks. Two weeks from tomorrow. So we're at that time of the year where if there's going to be stuff like this on the morning, I'm going to need to know soon. I don't have a problem bringing it to town meeting. Let, let them decide. And that's how it's supposed to work. But they may say no way, and they may say okay. Like Eric said, well, it's probably passed, but not necessarily. Yeah. I, if there was a targeted, if there was a, a target that money was headed toward, 
that would be easy to defend and support. Yeah. If there was a land purchase in the amount of thirty thousand dollars, and you're going to taxpayers for a half a cent, that was going to pay for that. Then I can see that being a one-time, one-year event. This is a one-year event to put thirty-three thousand dollars into an account for no specific purpose other than at some point we may, may want to buy an easement or purchase a land with money to go for that. It just is too ambiguous to me. It just it doesn't have a specific purpose. So that's, that's my concern. I'm not going to stop it before gumming in front of the taxpayers. I, I wouldn't stand in its way. I'm just saying that's my concern. But I do agree with Brian. It, you know, it's normally brought before us as you know to increase the budget, but it's just something different. Different way to do it. I mean, if I wanted to get it on without coming to these people, I would have just gone out and got those signatures. I'll go door to door, Ron. <laughs> Whatever. I've always been suggested to go up to a basketball game, and I'd probably get it all along. <laughs> yeah. Depends on the game. So, I mean, the whole idea was to get it on the ballot and take my chances before the public does it. That's all I'm asking. The select board could get it on there. It may be a half cent out of your pocket, but <coughs> well, it's mine too. What do you guys want to do? I have a problem with it going on the one. Correct. I'm okay for a, um, a one time thing. I, I strongly, I feel very strongly that there needs to be a plan. But I also understand that things come up and there needs to be some money in an account. Um, I think what makes it difficult is it's really hard to articulate to the public of what this is for. Um, so I'm going to liken it to, you talked a little bit before about Stowe Land Trust. It's very widely known. It's very visible, very active. So people can relate to what they're doing. And I'm not sure we're at that point yet with uh, the Morristown Conservation Commission. So that's my concern, is that there needs to be some public education <coughs> and around what this money is intended for. I think this, this was worded that it's going to be an annual thing. Uh, right, but I think that's even perhaps even more concerning then. So what is this, uh, what's the money going to sit there for? And I understand you need money in the bank to be able to make quick moves. So uh, I'm fine with going to the to the town, uh, to the public on town meeting. At the half cent. And maybe adding the date just but. for the 2021 fiscal year. Yeah, it's every year anyway. It so it doesn't. So it looks to be one year, but there wasn't an attempt to go on. Tina, how much of the money that the Conservation Commission has is liquid that could be used? Uh, Ron's right, and most of it is in CDs, but they usually come, what, isn't it every year, Sarah, that they are renewed? Every 12 months? It might be a little bit longer. We got a really, really great deal from the Union Bank. I can go and look if you want to uh, wait a minute, I can go and look, but I don't. And it, might have, been a slightly it, it, might, it might have been like 18 months. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like all in all into one right. instead of um, having them six months, they were going to like be upset. But if there's fifty one thousand, is it fifteen? Well, that's you have your financials right there. I didn't bring mine. I didn't. Even if that was the case, you say something came up, yeah, you know, we would take it out of general fund and have it. Right. To do well, and then yeah. rotate or yeah, we would. But if you look on your financial full, statements, I don't, I don't think there's it. much in liquid cash. Most of it's in. Most of it's in the CD. Of the we we kind of look at that. Yeah, and those four available. It's like thirty thousand. I think is some. Yeah, somewhere up to about thirty thousand is in the CD, and like two or three thousand is in liquid cash. Yeah, so. we kind of try to project out. So if we see that we're going to be using funds that are in a CD for a particular account, and then when it becomes available, then we move it to cash. If if we're sitting there looking and go, well, we don't know of any land purchases that we're going to make in the next year, or we haven't heard any rumblings about, then we keep it where it's going to make the most money. So. Um, I just want to say that I don't think that would stop us from acquiring the cash that we needed to do something in the short term. From somewhere basis. else, yeah. Right. So. What would you guys think you want to do? <coughs> He's just asking us to, if he can put this before the voters. Mike said that. 
I'd like to see. I I don't want to stop because you guys do wonderful things, and I'm not trying to be. I just think that the money we have given to you was set there for that already. So yeah, it's in the CD, but by the time you get ready to buy something and get around, probably you could use that. That's one way of looking at it. But then again, let the people decide. But I'd like it first. It'd be nice to have a plan of what you're doing. So like Chris said, if you. We're not just putting it there saying, well, if we need it later, have some plan out front, like they did with Brownsville. That's one issue. And the other thing is, like the one year thing, maybe? If you get that on there, and then, then the rest of the time, then that would let me feel better about bringing it to the people. But again, I may get out voted there. So. Well, if we were to hire the youth group for a week or two, they would eat up a considerable sum that they're getting in uh, trails. And they don't come cheap. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> that's the other possibility that doing Stark Park is not involved in youth group, but yeah. uh, the con 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 conservation force. Um, and again, we'd have that. I have no problem bringing us yeah. your budget and saying, hey, this year we want to get do this trails. Yeah. Uh, and then we can. I, well, I will say, though, to, to Ron's good. point, it's a little hard to come with a plan. Like, it is. Depends. I think you do that. need <laughs> having well, some reserve, well, and I understand that fifty thousand sounds like a lot, but it doesn't. Right. It's really not that much money. That's all I'm trying to do, Chris. Get this before. The I plan. hear you. Yeah. I think my concern, though, as I said before, is if, They'll if, probably if ask it's for a plan too. They will. If it's you easy. Bet. Yeah. If Luckily we will. start to articulate those things you're just well, talking about, if you have that laid out, I think you'd be in a better position. <laughs> well, should we vote on it? Do we need to vote on it? Well, I don't think we want to vote on something to get it fixed. No, we'll vote whether or not you can take it and kind of be in an agenda on the morning. If you decide not to, then I better start peddling. I want to find this. Yeah. Does he have time to, to reword it and come back to us? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, should we table it and until then? Um, just so the like board looks, yeah, you know, think of bringing it back on the twenty first, and well, that's not we're signing the warning. You could I well, put something in. This is thing. what I can do. Okay, I can work with Ron. I can word an article <coughs> for the warning for the twenty first. That night. You guys can make a decision whether you want it on the warning or not. I mean, it's more nothing more if you want to leave it or if you want to change it. And it's got to go in and retype it and reprint it so that you can sign it. So that's fair. Just you. So you give me is it is that the wording that you want to use? Yeah, if you want to make a change, so so it looks to be one year. Or um, I just I want the intent. So you have to do it. You just have to do the same thing. I have to come back next year if I want to do it again. Or I'd go out and power with a petition, the other route that can be done. And maybe having something like what Chris said, and you talked about BYCC and finding out what, what, is it, what would it cost to employ them for two weeks. I already know the cost. We, oh, good. Yeah. So that's something to like share. 20, over 20000 I think, for uh, a week or so. I mean, it's very expensive. It's, we want a private contractor to do the Mud Creek crossing because of it. about three times the amount that it would have been going private. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to keep everybody happy. You guys happy with that? Yeah. Okay, that's what we'll do. <coughs> yep. Thanks, All right. Next. Morristown Development Fund appointment recommendation. Yes, um, the, the MDF board has recommended that Marianne Wilson be appointed uh, for the remainder of uh, Tom Herchak's term, which will end in March of uh, 2022. Make a motion we appoint her. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? So she would start, start in March? No, she it, she would start now until March, and, and her term would end in March 2022. Oh, okay. So it's okay. for the remainder of that term. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.
Next, approved private road name, Rubenoy. <laughs> Approve it. Is there a motion? Is there a second? The only thing on that is it's going to be a small R. You can call them to make sure right. it's a small R, not a capital R. That's the correct grammar. Hmm. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? So this road's being put in advance of any homes. It's, it sounds like it's going to be a development. It is. And, you know, and for the policy, once there's those three lots, the select board would like them to be named, so we're not going back and trying to split that out later. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, budget. Highway budget. Come on up here, Kevin. And, uh, and Doug. Uh, yeah, where's Doug? Come on up here. Don't hike back there. Yeah, we'll find with you. Uh, yep. Is it under the, um, the gold, the orange tab, or a different section? Orange tab. Or it says number one. Go down through and see if there's anything you guys want to comment on. Item number three. What's item number three? Mm -hmm. The MDF? Yeah. No. Oh, we just did it. Just did that. Oh. Yeah. We appointed Mary Ann Wilson. Just do a kind of stitching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What we usually do is just go down through the items, and if we see anything that sticks out, we ask questions. Right. And feel free to comment on anything you guys know that we don't know. And as far as the administrative page, first page, we would all our work. Right. It's just, it is what it is. Dan, do we have any insight as to why <coughs> 1819 actual is 15% off? And then why the budget? That's a question for Tina. I guess. Yeah. Reflect. Yeah. In the past, um, it had been budgeted as a 15% increase for uh, estimated for overtime in the um, highway budget yep. for you know their winter overtime. Uh, looking back on it, that's a very <coughs> low estimate. It ranges somewhere in actuality between 30 and 35 percent during so, those months. Yep. Yes, I mean, I, I've gone back for a couple of years to look at that. It's just been under budgeted for the past years, and I that's why it's a lot more on the actual than what it is on the budget part, is because it really wasn't budgeted correctly. Right, which shakes out to about 15% more, though. But it's that's right, which would be in line with the 30% that it usually during runs. The, during the season, yep. Thank you. We, just, we made the change based on historical data. Yeah. You know, I see that. <laughs> we just missed it last year. Right. Really, yeah. mm -hmm. No big changes there. Number two. Budget for last, last year's 
it's not looking down. Right. We know it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we felt that you know we were closer to where our actuals ran last year. At least we'd be a little better off moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what about um, the actual for the diesel fuel was one hundred twenty thousand, and then but you only budgeted one hundred nine for the upcoming year. I think that was, you know, last year was a, a long, hard winter. And the price was higher, too. You know, you can never predict, but, you know, we can, there, there's always going to be some variances in that, but um, I think the last winter was exceptionally long and hard. Right. Okay. So when that happens and it's over budget, you have someplace else to go to get the funds, or this just system. shut the fuel off. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's really why you know, I stress the importance of having adequate reserve funds, you know, and, and, and undesignated balances so that we can take the peaks and valleys of some of those things. Mm -hmm. The greater blades is quite a bit, but. It's not, it's the same as last year, but quite a bit more than you spent this year, right? Well, we just bought greater blades, we were at the wall spot. What did you budget? Mm -hmm. 30 sacks, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're anticipating we do it. Should that go to twelve then, or do you don't think you'll need them again? What's the how? What's the cycle of them? How long do they last? I mean, they would get they would start raining and the roads where they are. Usually, on average, if uh, we'll change the set out every other week. So, if they were twelve five, should they that go to twelve five? You know, my, I should probably spoke, but then my qualifies was my problem. Okay. Thanks. The greater voice came in at that point. Okay. You know what? What's the lifespan? On which one? The greater blades. Greater blades. Oh. It really depends on the road surface and, and weather, humidity, moisture. It also is a factor. The uh, more stone that's in it, the faster they wear. And hopefully, we're going to get more stone to travel through the road stone. It's your age. That's correct. So they wear an active evening with oxygen. Oh. What they have there. We're going to get into smooth gravel, but it's going to be a lot better gravel, a lot better quality. Anything else on page two? <coughs> Page three. Uniforms have gone up a lot, didn't they? And they well, we had a total only budget of ten thousand actual fourteen. It's a thirty percent nearly, you know, increase. Dan, is that reflective? We don't have any more staff. Is that a reflection in their increased costs, or do we need to go out to bid on that again? Type of thing? That's a pretty substantial increase. Is that? Well, it seems like when you get, we've had a contract, it was GK before these guys, they sold out the centers. Right. And I think then they had an increase. Yeah. But it seems like the minute you get players. a uniform company, yeah, there's not. the minute they have a contract, things start to go up, it seems. And yes, it's probably time to go out to bid on that kind of thing again. Um, it's difficult to bid this because a lot of it has to do with customer service. And when we were with Unifirst, the guys hated it. Right. And g and was the only other game in town. That's why we went with them. And now Synthesis is bottom. But this was years and years and years ago. So it probably does bear looking at again. Yeah. We can we can look at. We that. actually, I think we went the last time around. I think we actually ended that contract with um, with Unifirst early, 
because yeah, the service it, was it so was, poor. It was bad. Yeah, there's just was, not a lot of options. Right, there's, yeah. there's just not. But that's what happened, like at Concept 2, our medical supplies <laughs> were were supplied by a different company that was fought out by Centus, and then the rates has just what, gone way up. up. And then you don't have, you know. So, but a lot. We can definitely look into doing something it like that. It might be worth it. Looking at we, it. we can always look at it, you know, but just yeah. just be, you know, like Chris said, there's there's not a lot of people out there. Yeah, Chris, who else does it? <laughs> Those are the two big ones I know. Right. Unless we want our highway guys to wear scrub, but I don't think that's going to work. Totally, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. So, three options. you got to have good uniforms, too. No skipping. It's an increase to see. I mean, most of the stuff on that page we can't touch, anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you can't, can't do much about anything else. All right. Next page. Page four. We want to go back to page three and we can talk about this just for capital budget so everybody understands what the purchases are for next year. Yeah, well, I th yeah, I thought we were going to do that after. No, right. right now. Okay, and just, and that's fine too. Just yeah, I know we. I was planning on talking about. It. We do it now. Well, I think we're probably out better off talking it as far as the overall capital because I think we can explain it as better as part of the overall capital budget. Okay. Let's we'll keep going then. Okay. Sorry. Do we do any road line cleaning <laughs> on the roads, or is that all done by the state? Which roads are you talking about? Uh, oh my, let's see, what, our secondary, Randolph, even even 100 in Midtown. Um, the state does all the class one and class two center lines, right? All right, and then fog lines? Do they, do? they don't put on fog lines except on the state highways. Okay. So Randolph Road, Stagecoach, Katie's Falls, Bridge Street. Um, they're ones that need fog lines though, you know? Randolph needs a fog line. Yeah, um, but the state only, only does the center lines for us. Yeah. Um, that's why they don't get them. That's the reason why they don't get them. Yes. Um, the village crew, we <coughs> contract out some of the, the painting for like the crosswalks and stop bars in the village because that just enables the village crew to do more work. Um, and then they go back through and do the parking spaces. Um, and some of the crosswalks and stuff are better on the, the outer skirts of the village. So that's the combination of who does it. Now, state does all the state highways, you know, outside with 100, all that other stuff, and does, they put fog lines on. Does the paint have like, I want to say, sparkle in it or something that reflected? In, in the village, in the village no, no. Not, we don't put any of that in. No. But you're just talking about the crosswalks. The, the crosswalks. I mean, but they're this, usually well lit, so people can. <clears> exactly. The center line, I don't know what they do on the center line paint. I think they do. But you know, that, that wears pretty fast. I know, I know just driving yeah. around just a little bit in Washington County around here, you know, the lines are terrible. Yes. All over the place. Yeah. Not not in, in town, but just on the state line. I mean, you guys can't do anything about that. Right. Do you usually just do that once the winter is finished? What's that? About to start cleaning the lines? We have to sweep first. And then, you know, then we'll go to that. Well, hopefully you won't have to repair so many holes around the village this year. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> it should be. Everything's working really nice right now as far as everything's... Salt and everything. Like to hear the, the low manhole. Yeah, cars. yeah. That, that's so the way. It, that's that. the way it was. Is it possible down. to look at the hot mix line item and maybe adjust that down a little. We could put coal patch in them. I'm, I'm just saying, just to level them off. Oh, the man. I'm not talking about the manhole. I'm oh. just talking about the line item for hot mix. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Actual 1819 was 3400 budgeted for this year is 14. And then proposed budget is 10. We've got all new pavement pretty much in the village, except for. Generally speaking, this is where we, we do call it repair or patches, patchwork. Mm -hmm. So if we're digging something up, we're using some of this for, for doing that kind of patchwork. So it's not really for village in this it's, case. But it's, it's kind of for it all could over. Be. <laughs> 
Occasionally, we used our, our, our box that goes behind the dump trucks and wolf shims, which is kind of handy for us to do. So. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions on page four? Uh, roadside tree cutting, the tipping tree trimming, that's a drop on our proposed budget. Are we not planning to do any of that or not doing much? Well, we fired last this fall. Mm -hmm. That much tree come in and do a cave thing in about um, just under 4,000. Okay. Um, I should see the rental when it increased a little bit. Um, as, uh, I was thinking about going about and writing a check for ourselves and doing as much as what we can do our, on, on by ourselves instead of hiring somebody else to come in. Do it, and that's why those numbers have changed a little bit. Do we still own a chip? We build electrical. Yeah, electrical. Yeah, yeah, small one goes on the back of the track. Right, yeah. That's a tractor mount one. Yeah, it's fine for brush. Right, but not for. Yeah, we'll take anything unless they're going to couple things. I just want to make sure you've got enough in there. I know that the, the concern in the years past has been getting up over Walton Road. Yeah. With the town line there, those roads are starting to get encroached, and it's hard for the plowing of the trucks. And, Stuff slapping the mirrors and whatnot. So I just want to make sure that you're you've got enough there to, to cover down on the distances you want to cover this year. Okay. That was pruned back pretty good a couple of years ago. So hopefully we'll need it for a while. A wall room? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember the people in here. Page five. Not much we can do about any of that. Except the sidewalks. Dan, in light of the Halloween storm and some of the things we ran into, which we hope not to have a lot more of those, but do we need to increase our uh, inventory of signage for those? Events where we have multiple road closings and not have signs to go around. What do you guys is, think? Is it, is it money well spent to have that signage available, or because I know we had times where we had we had roads with just cones across it, and mm -hmm. people were moving the cones, and um, we just we run out of signs. We had so much damage, that mm -hmm. we couldn't have enough signs. So think about that, I guess, before we come to a final on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was wondering about amount of salt that we use on the roads, and is there must be a formula that we use, right? Percentage of salt to sand. And well, it really on. depends on what we're getting for temperature, and precipitation. Um, what type of precipitation? Yeah, whether it's snow, if it's freezing rain, uh, air temperature makes a huge difference. Um, if it's been warm for a few days. When the black top warms up, you get a little bit of snow, it usually just melts it off, you don't need to put a lot of salt. But if it's been cold you know, for quite a few days in a row below freezing, and then we get some snow, then it seems to get a little bit traffic and cold right and wear ice, you know, use a little more salt. We try to average between three to five hundred pounds per month. What was that, three to five hundred? Which is, again, it's, it's Sort of an educated guess because we don't have computerized things how far we can thin. We just we kind of dial it right a little lower or a little higher. It really depends on the feel of the road and right. what's out there. I'm just wondering about the impact on the environment, the amount of salt being used. I don't know anything about it, I just know that there's some concern about that. I've always found the greenest part of the road is right beside it. There's more grass growing there than anywhere else. Good. Any more questions on page five? No, I, I, so I apologize. I had to miss last meeting, but I'll just, and I understand the discussion that ensued. Uh, but I will say, I would put one more plug in. I still think we should increase the sidewalk fund with an understanding that there are limitations within the village 
crew uh, to do work, but I still would like to see that increase. Yeah. That's great. It's my <laughs> Here, the um, just given some of the challenges we have, should we look at that bridge fund reserve? Entirely up to the board. We do want to look it at that. It seems like that is an issue for us year, after, mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. after year after mm year. -hmm. Um, so that's another area I would flag for increasing. increasing. Granted, we don't know what our bottom line looks like right now. But <laughs> well, currently, project-wise, we talked to Ron about projects and any dollars for them. We know the, Mac, the Miller Bridge, yeah. that is a mess. That is a priority bridge for us. <coughs> Excuse me. We have other culverts, not necessarily bridges, but culverts in town that need attention more than others. Uh, I've always thought that <coughs> 30000 a year is, is underfunded, but we, we're always trying to save costs when we can. And now we're in a position where the money that's in the reserve is going to be, be completely depleted, mostly. I mean, 95% depleted by the time we replace the Mud City Loop. Culvert, put a box culvert in. So it's nice that we have the money available. We just think that we're lucky there's only one. But we still have a bridge deck to do, which is going to be, I, I don't know what the cost is on that, the Miller Bridge deck. I mean, I guess the other question is is it appropriate to do, <coughs> and make scary things, but a bond vote or something to get some of this work done that just hasn't been done? I, I don't disagree with you. I, I, in a perfect world, I'd say, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, except that we're still paying on the $500,000 bond for I, paving. I know. So I, I'd like to see one that bond settled before we go to anything that, other than that, the taxpayers are just yep. getting beat up. Before we really look at that bridge, I think it would be fair that I got the board a better cost estimate and scope of work. Right. Um, you know, I know it needs to be taxed. Last time I was in the Senate, I think the, the structure was good. The upstream. Being probably needed either some repair or replacement. Uh, the rest of them weren't too bad, it was mostly deck. I don't remember the abutments being in bad shape at all. I remember that's what men said. It was yeah. just the deck. The was... deck was mostly good. You know, that's, that's a little bit beyond my um, comfort reason. level. Yeah, yeah, I'm not comfortable making that decision. I, you know, I, I need to get a civil engineer involved in that. We still have the Katie Stalls Bridge, which is an unknown as far as where we're going to ride or what's going to happen with it. Can you tell me where the Noah Bridge is? Noah Bridge is uh, when you turn from Route 100 south of the village to go over to Morristown Corners. It's that concrete mm -hmm. bridge with the cable. At the bottom of it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A little short section. Yeah. Just before we turn to Katie Stalls Bridge. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the deck's in bad shape. The mm -hmm. structure's not bad. Yeah. Which I mean, the bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. I think there's no question we could increase the dollar amount going into that fund. I, I, I would propose 50000 versus 30000 But, folks, I mean, it's going to come a time when even that's not enough. But yeah. I, I, we can only plan and, and do our best. The good thing about that one is it will be eligible for you know, a structured grant. So there, there, is money, there is money available from the state, from the state, not federally, that, that is available for projects like that. So, um, I, I really, before I, you know, if that's something that the board really wants to come back to <coughs> in a year or two, then let me do the background research that we would need to do to, to see about what really needs to be done on the bridge to come back with, with much better scope of work and cost estimate for the bridge reserve funds. And if, you know, I'm a firm believer in these reserve funds, and I think having this time around paid off for us, where we're not going out to the voters and try to borrow money to do this repair. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, the, the bridge reserve fund has is, is worked well for us to be able to do these things. But I think that is the next bridge. I think we just, even the, the, the Gulf Road, you know, everything that's been said about that, the engineer says that the structure itself is in good shape. <coughs> but I don't think you would find that saying the same thing about the deck on that bridge. It needs to be replaced soon. Um, so. I, I know, do you, does the town go around and inspect 
all the bridges and the culverts. The state does for us, and then the, these guys get underneath of them each year and clean them. So they're, they're underneath of them, taking a good look at them each year. The bridges, what about the culverts? Culverts. I mean, it, I don't think, you, can you predict when one's going to go or not? No, I mean, at one point, I guess the town's got a lot of the black plastic culverts in it right now, and many fail. Um, the reason being is where they, the bell comes together, um, it's right in the center of the road. You've got 20 people in LA, 20 people in LA, and it's always right in the highest impact area on the road. Mm -hmm. So those bells are weaker. They're a thinner material than the rest of the corrugated culvert. So they tend to crush and collapse. Um, so you can look up through there and see that, oh yeah, that's only this high. It's starting to squish, yeah. should be 20 inches. So we're, we found quite a few of those during Halloween storm. Some of them, uh, some of the road damage you know, not had been so bad, they weren't quite. Is it because they're not deep enough? enough? Because the material is not enough? No, it's just <coughs> the product itself. Everybody has gone away from them. They were, uh, uh, I take it, a, a cheaper mm -hmm. version. They were cheaper, um, yeah. They don't rot out. Mm -hmm. They don't rot. But now everybody's going to a heavier <coughs> gray plastic. Right. It slides together. Everything is just as strong, and all the bells are stronger. They're harder to work with, but they they won't collapse on themselves. The black ones make good driving culverts. Yes. Right. So do we have a do we have a kind of an estimate of how many of those culverts need to be replaced over a certain time period? Right now, no. I know that next summer, right now, I've got over fifteen culverts on my list that need to be replaced. Those are kinds of ones you saw during the Halloween storm that were well, impacted. Yes, some of those were impacted by that, and others are just, uh, we found a, a couple up on the Garfield Center Road that the ends have rotted, and they're just, they've been in there, their lifespan. Mm -hmm. um, they're the old asphalt tire culverts, and they're just, they've done that. What we found in the past years, we had a flood in 94, was that right, Tina? Something like that? The storm damage. It was, wasn't it? I thought it was 2011. No, it was 11. There was one before that. Oh. Uh, well, I don't know. I can start here to so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, there was a cycle there for a while where there was just a flood. It was you know, just like the Halloween storm, but on a much, much larger scale. And a lot of the culverts got replaced during that. So what happened over the past couple of years is all of those culverts were starting to wear out at the same time. So if you look over the past history of the culvert budget, we've increased it over the years for the guys to be able to go out and change those culverts. Okay. Um, so we've been doing that on a regular basis. And well, on our secondary roads, we've been doing an advance of new pavement going down. Correct. We did a lot of Randolph Road, exactly. a lot of culverts that were placed down through there as we've been paving that. So any time we've been paving, we've been replacing the culverts before we pay. So. Okay. Okay. So at this point, your suggestion, Anna, is to leave the, the $30,000? I think we should increase it to fifty. Okay. If you want to see where we come out with the budget before we do that. Yeah, exactly. You know, we can put it in the budget and we'll have another shot at it. And if you want to take it back out, we can. Yeah. I think, you know, in the summer, you know, <coughs> before the next budget cycle, Kevin and I will get together and we'll get a civil. We'll go out and look at the, 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 the bridge road and, and see what it's going to take and start giving you a better estimate of that. And then we can also get with the agency of transportation to see what's available for, for grant funds. Because there is a structured grant available specifically for that. So I think we can look at it. and that way you can have a better cost estimate and, and you can make a better financial decision then about when you want to tackle that project. Okay. okay. So for draft budget reasons, we're working towards final, we're going to increase that to 50. Correct. But realize then if there's, there's yeah. as far as yeah. cutting the budget yeah. back, the board wants to do that, it's kind yeah. of low hanging for all right, page seven. Any questions? <coughs> we move into the Capitol Highway. This is where we talk about trucks. Actually, what I wanted to ask, uh, <coughs> Doug and Kevin, 
ask all the departments this, but what else are we not seeing on here? What else do we do you guys need for longer term bigger deal down the road, not necessarily a truck, but could be like you're talking about a chipper or something like that. Is there things that you have on your wish list or things that we really need and don't have? Those are things you want to know about. Your wish list can get fairly expensive. Mm. Okay, no, we, want to, we want to hear what they are. So we <laughs> have. Just right off the top of my head, after the Halloween storm, uh, a rubber wheeled excavator. It used to be called a draw. Yeah, I know what they are. Okay. I've run them before. They're just, you can drive them from site to site, you don't have to load it. Um, cost wise, they're probably 75 grand more than the regular excavator. And we're still talking about $200,000. The efficiency of it, it sits higher, obviously, with it on the wheels. So if you go any size truck, the excavator is better at sitting on a pile of dirt to load bigger trucks. Mm -hmm. um, or, I mean, it, it doesn't mind working on a hill, it's easier that way for it, but if you're on a flat level around the road, the excavator works for that. It's that for the um, Just things that are coming up that, you know, We'll have to talk more about capital funding. Um, trucks, the rollover, I, I've got some old nines and that we're in the process now weaning out for next year, but it still gives me 11 and 12s that really, I was told by Mr. Clark, old man Clark, two years ago that if we can get rid of a truck while it still has one year left on its extended warranty program, mm -hmm. it, it, it almost doubles our. Once you get traded in, trading back. Sure does. Mm -hmm. Once they're out, they're worth a lot. Right. right, once they're out, they're out. Like we got a 2013 in the village. This is the time now to be thinking about having going to another one there. Right. Well, it's worth something. I think we had a tendency of getting behind on our trucks, and I think Dan's got a plan. Or <clears> yeah, Tina, Tina and I have looked at it. She put together the numbers. I just gave them the ideas. So, um, because realistically, I think, you know, a while ago, you could comfortably get 10 years, 13 years out of truck, depending on what you are. Um, I, I think one thing that's really, really changed it you know, from my perspective is, is the admissions programs. Mm -hmm. Because there's it's nothing that we can work on. Uh, I don't even think the mechanics that we at the dealers work on them well anymore. So we need more warranty. Well, with the trucks that we're buying this year, we've got a seven year extended warranty on it. Um, which makes perfect sense because I think overall it, it's going to do, it's going to cut our repair budget down eventually. I think we're we're kind of at a peak on it, and we watched it go up because we've had repairs, especially when you get into the emissions and the, the turbochargers that it just the, the repairs just keep going on. And sometimes I feel like we can't walk into a truck center anymore. You're you're right to check for a thousand bucks when you take it down. Oh, it seems yeah. like if you're lucky. So yeah, we've, yeah, we've okay. got the extended warranties on everything that we're borrow, buying now for as long as we can. Um, typically speaking, we have been financing our trucks on a three-year cycle for a three-year period. Um, I don't think that makes sense anymore. Um, the select board has the authority um, to finance up to five years on, on highway equipment without voter approval. And I don't think I'd go much longer on that anyway because you, you start to pay more in interest. So what Tina put together in, in the budget for you now was to start financing trucks on five years, the big trucks, the single axle dumps and, and tandems, because we're, we're spending 130 well, to, you know, 180,000 yeah, dollars. The single axle is what, 180,000 <coughs> Exactly. Um, and the other thing that we're running into now, because some of these trucks are within their life cycle, is we don't know what we're going to get for trade-in and like we're right now we're trying to to budget a trade-in for something that we're really not going to trade in for the next year and a half yeah. so yeah. what we're going to do as far as the capital budget we're going to start planning into our capital budget the full purchase price for what we want to go out and buy um, i know there's been some discussion i think it's good discussion about the capital reserve the, the penny or the whatever that we go to the voters for um, what I really want to do is start taking any money that we get from trade-ins and putting it into that fund, which will, once again, it'll help us 
to lower future costs, it's not going to help us much right now. On the purchase. And on the purchase, but, you know, when we go out and we get ready to buy something later on, then we're going to have more money sitting in the bank so that we can say, all right, yeah, this truck's 180000 but we got $30,000 last year for a trade-in. We, we can start to project more, and we'll have cash in hand rather than be guessing. And I think if we start to do those things now with our capital budget, I think we'll get better trucks. We won't be, you know, spending nearly as much time with the truck down at the repair center. Um, and if it is there, it'll be a warranty covered item, not something that we're writing a big check for. I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm saying. We're still going to have repair costs. Oh, yeah. We're always going to have repair costs. Um, but I think with trucks um, and the way we use them with salt and sand in a slow environment, not highway speeds, especially on the emissions, I think it makes a lot more sense to start cycling them out, you know, at the end or before the end of the warranty period. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to save a lot of frustration on the highway crews part. We're going to be able to deliver better service to the voters, I think, for probably at about the same or lower cost. That's what I would propose. So we, we'll spend a little more money on interest, but if we finance them longer, the pit will lower the payment per year. And yes. as long as we get a good warranty or a warranty that is long, we'll be in better shape. Yes. It'll take so us a while to get through the cycle to get there, but I think that's the direction that the town should be moving in. And nothing against the fire department. Or, I mean, the ambulance trucks, they're out there all the time. Right? Mm -hmm. Fire department truck. You spend that kind of money for it. They bring it back after they're done to get washed to get set in the bay until the next call, whenever that is. Highway trucks, we're out there every day. All the time. They're hauling gravel, sand back to the shop, and wear and tear. Just always running. I am. Uh, I'm going to advocate that this year we go to the voters with uh, an increase to two cents for the capital re equipment replacement for the highway department. And I'll tell you why. The, the cost for single axle, and our single axles are, uh, well, what's a, what's a tandem? It's about, eight, about eight grand more. So about 100, right? the, the new one coming in is uh, $200,000. Yeah. For the new one, <coughs> for the new one. Two cents currently on the grand list would be 100 and, uh, 120, 132, 26, right. So. Uh, my my point being that's two thirds of the cost of a single accident by truck in one year. We're talking about increasing our replacement schedule. I like your plan of the trading money going into that fund. I like the plan of <coughs> extending the, the financing to lower the rate to help us to accommodate that. I still don't think it's going to be enough long term. I, I think we need to address we need to address this up front rather than continuously playing catch up. Um, that's why I'm advocating for a two cent uh, this year and running the voters for that approval versus the one cent we've been doing. For the very reason, we, this is a department with the largest amount of motorized equipment we have in the town. The equipment has a lifespan, and we have been pushing it to extend it. And we're, we're paying the price now. I can tell you, during our last two storms, I was in the village garage because Doug was calling me. Uh, they have Two dump trucks typically their primary for plowing and sanding with a third in reserve for backup. One of the primaries is at Clark's. It's having engine work done and the backup. Well, I know what I would use for terminology normally, but in this environment, I would say it died. Yes. <clears throat> the frame twisted, an arm, one of the sport arms broke. It's just the truck out there. It, it was Jack Courier's truck. Jack retired before oh, I yes. And the truck was at 06, 07. It's a uh, 09. 09? Okay. Yeah. It's 10 years old and it was eaten away by salt. They couldn't even put a wing plow on it because the hydraulic controls had rotted from the salt. So, so I, we're just asking too much of our trucks to last that long. For the, you know, um, I, I think the, the sheer amount of equipment we have down there, we need to increase it to two cents. That's my pitch. And that's, you know, when we start talking about loaders, graders, we're down right now. We've got the old six Volvo in, in the village that needs to be replaced. Getting tired. I've got my old case. It needs to be replaced. It's a couple hundred thousand plus right there between the two. Eric, are you going to get up in front of the voters and give that spiel? I would have no problem. 
no problem with that. I, Somebody our, needs some. I mean, our, our, our voters are taxpayers for the money that they spend, and it's painful when that check is written every quarter. They deserve to have their basic needs met, which is in the winter time in this state, their roads are open and available for them to go to work, to earn the money, they're going to then spend their taxes. And just we can't. The more we push this down the road, the bigger this money problem is going to get with the highway department specifically, yeah, because just, we are just getting buried in, in broken trucks. Just the perspective on this truck that we're talking about right now, just to get this truck back up and running back here, because it's supposed to be traded in, is nine thousand dollars. Right. It, so this is a ten-year-old truck, and this is a perfect example. Of trucks don't last ten years anymore. Um, and that's so that we can maybe keep it, it may run, it may not, but um, to, to, to do the overall repair on it is going to be 42000 48, close to 50, 40. Yeah, yeah, it was so, 50, um, 50. On a truck we're getting ready to trade in. Right. So Nine grand is the cheapest not, version. Yeah, obviously, we're not going to do that, but we're a life cycle truck and we can get to the, the point where maybe we can make it last a couple more months. That's what I'm talking about with repairs. At seven years, you know, so we're talking the difference of the last three years of the truck. If we're getting rid of it at the seven, then we're, we're escaping from all these repairs just before we get rid of something. So um, that kind of starts to pay for itself right away. Denny, you want to be looking to get a six year plan. Like he said, if you've got a year left on that extended warranty, that puts you at seven. Right. So if you start a replacement at six, then trade it with warranty. You know, right. I understand the cost of keeping used trucks running. Mm -hmm. And yeah, our trucks, they come out of there with hardly any miles, hardly any hours, but they're done. But they're a lot more expensive than these guys are out all the time. And I think, like you were saying, if you can present that and add in this is the plan with a six year turnaround. And the only thing I would ask is the drivers don't get to choose what they drive. That sent me back the last time they bought a truck. Driver Pacific. Drivers don't last that long. I, I can tell you, and I know what you're talking about, yeah. but I can address that. I can tell you that dump trucks in general across the board are coming out automatic. The transmissions, the electronics are oh, much don't. more efficient than a standard shift truck. No, no, no I'm just saying the brand name. Oh. oh, that goes out to bid. So that's not, right. We're we're at the mercy of the bid prices and and who comes in with the best buyer. Yeah. That's right. so I I hear what you're saying, but it's, it's not. It's happened in the past where not for a long time. On a certain truck. Not for a long time. Brian right. and I argue, but other than that, yeah. Well, <laughs> like I said, you know, and as far as an automatic, all our trucks are automatic. Yeah. You cannot get a standard. Yeah. Which you have more control over, but we won't go into that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea and stick with that six year plan. Six year plan by Chevy, you got me. Well, <laughs> with, <laughs> us, with, us, a, with the fire equipment, it's a 10 year plan. You want to get rid of it in nine years. Because once you go over 10 years, you lost any kind of money you're going to make up. I was going to say, I started poking you, I know. But it's the same with the PD, you know, the EQs, they get beat on day after day, it's the same kind of thing. You know, we, we have to make sure we have a plan to take care of our, our vehicles. And uh, this is a good way to do it. I just think it's a hard pill to swallow to go from one cent to two cents, but I'm not saying we don't need it. There's no doubt we do. Yeah. You know, I think I think the PD has a good plan of how they manage their vehicles too, but I, I think they get too old too. Same thing. Right, Richard? Yes, I do. Does that mean you're gonna stay another ten years? <coughs> yes. Does that, yeah. that mean you're gonna stay That's another ten years? I just heard him say you know, ten years. Yes. Yes. You talking about old what? Do I hear five? <laughs> <laughs> Jason's <Yeah. laughs> You still got trade in value. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Still got warranty, Richard. Right. <clears throat> but anyways. Uh, that's all like to add. Um, the salt sand shed we have. Uh, the roof is in pretty dire straits. The one at the high, down the highway? The one at uh, Cochran River. Oh. The yeah. big dome. Yep. 
building that we put tax. Had a new roof on it like five years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. I think they put shingles on it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't actually put new plywood and right. framing and right. Um, it's very tender, rickety, very rickety. Um, my suggestion would be to dismantle it and get rid of it. Um, I know of no other town around us that stores their winter sand inside. I mean, we leave it out at the village. Mm -hmm. I put a lot more sand. It'd be easier on the loaders on the equipment. Trying to right now, we ramp it and try to carry it up all up in there and move around, and we end up breaking things. And there's a reason we aren't there when they do that. Right, because you wouldn't. You, 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 you like wouldn't. It. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's not a real safe it's environment. Awesome. Right. Um, so it's one of the things that I spoke to Dan about and wanted to get out here with you guys. Yeah. My thought would be to dismantle it this summer and just put up a regular sand pile like everybody else has. Could that be done in house? Yeah. Yes. I don't see why. Not not we'll just push on one edge. Yeah. 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 Excavator. Oh, excavator. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a match. You just need a just need a dumpster there to get. The reason that came up or was put on there in the first place is based on a lawsuit from how many years ago? Correct. The, the gentleman lived neighbored there and his water was contaminated as well. Yes. And so they did all these extra measures in order to contain the salt, the salt residue, and all this that other thing. Well, the salt shed but itself but isn't going to get moved or changed. And actually, I think again, once we get into better material in our pit, right now with all the clay that's in that sand that we're using right now, we have to put in a lot of the salt to keep it pliable so that it will run through our keep it usable. units, yeah. keep it usable. Um, moving forward with some better material coming out of the pit, we won't have to use as much of it. So then right now, as far as the water problem here, you know, that's coming from a well that's a way away. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we should be yeah, able to all yeah. So let's talk about the truck replacements. The plane. Are you in the front and capital box? Is that where you're looking? Yeah. We're so the hand out here. We're talking about this box. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's about the trucks that we just financed. Right. So that's the other thing I want to bring up. Um, this is a little bit of a different piece. We, this current fiscal year that we're in, the trucks that we bought have not been delivered yet. We were trading in three trucks. Two of those trucks are completely shot. Yeah, that's the two trucks that we were just talking just about. Talking about. Getting a nine thousand dollar mortgage to be traded. To be traded. To be traded. So we were we were counting on forty thousand dollars worth of trade in on those. Yeah, two. they were. It was going to be twenty for each truck. That right, we and we're not getting anywhere close to that now for trade in value. I mean, because the the dealers already know what kind of shape they're in. We'll be lucky if we get anything out of that. So what that did, it kind of left us in a hole in our current fiscal year um, for purchasing those trucks because you know we're getting ready to spend money. But when we go to write the check, we've only got the loan amount, and we're not going to have the mo enough money that we borrowed to pay for the trucks. Right. So what I'm proposing to the board is that we refinance those loans to a large amount. What we're really going to do is we're going to pay off the current loan and go back to the same number of payments because you're required to do that. But we're going to borrow a little bit more money because we're going to run short on being able to purchase those trucks in this fiscal year. Um, Tina came up with a plan to do that that really doesn't affect us any because we extended the terms just a little bit. And once again, you're allowed to do the five years. So we can't go over five years. But what Tina did with a four-year loan on these trucks that we're getting ready to buy in this fiscal year, it's really cost-neutral for us, but it, it, it saves us from taking another $60,000 hit or so in this current fiscal year that we're in. So if it's okay with the board, I can kind of brief Sarah on it. Tina's got the plan put together. We'll go ahead and get those out to bid again and refinance those loans so that we can buy the trucks that will be coming in soon. So you only make two payments a year? Yes. Okay. Tax time. Oh, okay. What does, what does it mean 
I understand body, but so why is it what sixty eight eight for the body? Yes, for the dump body. And then um, the rest of it is for for the <coughs> chassis cab, and then the dump body and the plow. Cabin chassis. Kind of they sold a la carte. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. Yep. Because we can put whatever kind of body we want. Oh. Sometimes we want a different place. Oh, okay. What do you need, what do you need Dan? Just if, if it's okay with the board that we go ahead and start that process. I mean, I don't need you to make a motion tonight because we're going to come back and ask you to, to to approve the loans. But that really saves us from taking a big hit on these trucks for this fiscal year. And helps us level out the purchase price over the next couple of years. We think the interest rates are about the same. Um, we're anticipating they're going to be just a little bit higher. It's going to be a longer term loan. Um, so, you know, we anticipate that they're going to be a little bit higher. 4% or something. We put in 3.5% on those projections. Yeah. Yeah. If we were, for current, we were at 2.3 <coughs> or 2.4. A little over 2. Yeah, just a little over 2. That may not be that. It's so, it's definitely yeah, a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we're we're a little high just so that we can budget correctly. Right. But we always try to estimate our interest rates just a little bit high. That way, we're we're not coming back with a big surprise on our budget. You're happy when well, it comes. Trucks coming. They're due. One is final one, inspection right yeah, now. Yeah, one's in final inspection test phase. Uh, the other one um, is being built. That just started today. Yeah. Same well, that's the chassis. Once the chassis gets here, it takes six to eight weeks to get everything put on. Yeah. So by the time they get here, it'll be mud season. The first will be a mud season. I mean, it's, a it's okay with me. It's fine with me. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started on that then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now the capital equipment fund. So the other thing on there, I'm sure that everybody wants to talk about is the tool cap. Yeah, not really. So uh, no. tool cap. cap. Yes. Don't look at that, Brian. Well, I'm all right with it. So I'll throw it out there. I've been, I spent a lot of time with Doug. I spent a lot of time with his operators, uh, the tool cap and the holder. Uh, the holder came back to us after a very long stay at the manufacturer. Uh, we'll make excuses for the company, but there are some changes they made personnel-wise that seem to have impacted the, the speed at which that machine came back to us. Um, all the work was done under warranty with a very minor exception. I think it was an $1,800 bill, dollar bill, uh, but the amount of work they did to that machine was, uh, they rebuilt the middle of it. Pretty much, yeah. Um, the machine is, uh, is running wonderfully. It is operating great. Um, the, very, the operators are very happy to have it back. As far as um, the tool cap and replacing the tool cap with another holder, I would not be in favor of that, just for the sheer cost of a new holder. I would be in favor of replacing the tool cap with another tool cap, and the reason I say that is because we already have. All the attachments paid for, and in our inventory, the cost of a tool cap, just the machine, is fifty thousand. Uh, not having to replace or buy buy a, a duplicate set or another set of uh, attachments for it saves the taxpayers a lot of money. But as we add sidewalks, sidewalk distances, the machines, uh, we we've we've gone beyond approaching. We're past the point where we need two sidewalk machines. And they need to be out there in the storms. I mean, we, 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 we're there. I'm assuming the tool cat is the sidewalk. Wow. Both of them. So the, the tool cat and the holder are both sidewalk, winter sidewalk machines, but they do have applications in the summer months as well. The tool cat works good for sweeping, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got a. The holder doesn't. Yeah, the holder doesn't. The sweeper is like two years old. I got a wicked deal on that. And it works good for cleanup, right? When oh, yeah. Spring. Grass, everything. Mm -hmm. Works really well. It also has lift capacity uh, with forks. I mean, there's stuff things you can yeah, do with that. There's a lot of things. Uh, it's very versatile, but it. Uh, and we have it all, like you said. Everything's do. here. The holder, uh, the advantage it has, not only in the loop that present gave us our presentation uh, <clears throat> a couple meetings ago, 
Uh, it is more narrow, the visibility is better. So in a village area, it works wonderful. It gets in those narrow spots where our telephone poles and buildings are close together. It allows them better visibility with the, and the camera to the rear to observe uh, pedestrian traffic in the around. On the north end of town, we don't have that density to deal with. We don't have the narrowness in the walks. We don't have the number of pedestrians on the sidewalks. Um, so you the toolcat tool tool will be used in the north end of town. Mm -hmm. and, and in the event the holder went down in the village, the toolcat and the bobcat together could fit, we could still address the narrow spots with a bobcat mm -hmm. where the toolcat could, could exactly. do it as well. So if each one of them can cover down for the other, the village will just take a little bit of a variation. Uh, on snow removal stuff, but and that that price is with a five year warranty too on it, extended warranty. So, Hundred thousand. No, fifty. Fifty. <clears throat> the thing, the thing about me, me without the holders, you can buy three of these tool cats for that price. But it don't fit everywhere. Yeah, That's but the, the bobcat. I mean, the bobcat can do the rest. I understand, and the guys are happy with it, so I don't want to. My thing is now, let's hope they do the service because for them to have that all summer and you not oh, have it back and time that. to use it is yeah. one of the things that bothers Pretty me. Pretty bad, yeah. If you've yeah. got things straightened out. Yeah. I, I watched that two, uh, holder go around and I, I understand what you're saying. It's really mm -hmm. hits in good places where the tool cat's a little bigger, but then the tool cat does more yeah. in some ways because you can plow and sweep both of that. You can't in the holder. Right. And then the 180 on top of that. Right. It's not the price as much as it was in service. Yeah. When I and found out it was gone all summer. Right. And, and again, any idea what it cost if, if that wasn't under warranty? That's a scary thing. Yeah. Well, that's running out in August. So, yeah. That, so, hopefully, everything goes good. I mean, it's been when they did everything, they replaced steer pistons, uh, line board. They did anything and everything it was wrong. Things that we didn't know, they found. Doug and the guys sent a so, list of things yeah. that they knew were wrong with it down with the machine. Yeah. They fixed them and discovered several other very expensive problems yeah. and they fixed them. Yeah. And the guy that I've been dealing with, the service manager, he's been right on top. Anytime I call, I get a message back. He calls me back. So I mean, That's good. it's helped to know. How much longer is the warranty and the holder? <clears throat> the holder runs out on August 18th, I think. This is the we're in the last year of it. Yeah. You can't get an extended warranty on it. Or uh, we could try. We can always yeah. ask. Might not be a bad idea. No, not we, at we all. You can always ask. Yeah. <coughs> like you said, we had to pay for all those repairs. We might have mm -hmm. spent more. Yeah. Well, I'm in favor of getting another tool pack. Yeah. The fine side cost of it, and it can do more. And I, we have all the attachments, <clears throat> Eric was saying. I've, I've checked it out, a brand new one, and they're pretty much the same thing. They've changed out a motor in it. It's got a, a ditch motor versus a Kubota, which is still a good engine. Um, and that's basically the only difference. It's the same machine, basically. A little update on stuff, but all the same. The other thing that's on there, big ticket item sweeper. Um, mm, yeah. We've had that sweeper, we bought that sweeper used. We've it's done good service for us. Doug um, loves that sweeper. <laughs> Doug's the only one that can run that. I know he is. <laughs> well, it's, it's been a good machine, but it's it's getting here now. You got a lot of hours on that machine. Yeah. Doug, do you have any idea how much to replace it? I know we have a figure in the budget, but I don't know if you have you got. I, I would say I I don't know now. I mean, it's at least one hundred eighty thousand to two hundred. I would say right. yeah. for one of those. That's what we've got kind of in the budget. Yeah. <clears throat> what what's the lifespan? Well, the one I have now that's a two thousand. Yeah. So twenty years, and I've taken care of it because I'm the only it. one that run it and. I've taken care of it, so. So, I don't know whether to. Well, I know I have to try other ones. Out. A vector machine, you know, that's the way of the world now and stuff. And the mechanical part was really good, so I'm going to have to see what I can get to try out. I know what one of them will do, and I can still get one of the mechanical one like that. 
and it's maneuverable and it cleans good. So if we get another new one, you'll stay another 20 years to take care of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, for sweet, but you know, it's got air conditioning, a new one. This one right. does it no more and stuff, so. He's gets, sleeping all summer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? I'd like to point out you see that there is nothing in line anywhere for the loaders. Yeah. The yeah. graders. Yeah, I know it's a big the question. Mark. The Volvo. The, the Volvo is in there. Right. At 150 for next year. Right. Or two years. Yeah. Well, we're looking at dump trucks. I think we get the, the truck thing fixed or, or uh, schedule rearranged, then it's time to look at all of our equipment. I, I really, it's well. You know, the capital budget is served as well. I mean, you know, it's it's been uh, it's something that we work on. I, I bet we change it probably more, a lot more than Dana likes each year. Um, it's a living document for us. So every time things change constantly on us, so we're always working on this document. So um, we'll keep working at it. And we'll, we'll keep getting with department heads and keep working on it. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, we, well, we appreciate that you guys are so on top of it, too. And you work with Dan, and, you know, it's great. You know the equipment better than any of us do, and you know what you need. And we appreciate your, your input, and we value it. That's what I say, too. It's like when I sit here and preach about the numbers and things, and I want to listen to the guys because they run them. So when they tell me we just want to fix the, some of the problems with them and, and the service, especially, like you said. Yeah. It was nice having Luke in here a couple weeks ago, yeah. too, you know. And right. It's really nice. Don't tell him I agreed. <laughs> but it's nice to hear from the people that run them every day. Well, I'm going to throw a pitch out to our leadership in those departments, too. Because we had a, a young man who's been with the department for five years who came up here and made a proposal in front of his supervisor, and he was allowed to do that. Yeah. I can tell you there are shops around this state and probably around this county that that would be frowned upon for their staff to come forward. I believe did a nice job with the proposal. Mm -hmm. And whether either one of you agreed or disagreed with what his proposal was, you allowed him to come up here and do that. I loved it. I, I love the fact that we had somebody willing to dig in and give us the numbers and take a closer look at that machine. It was educational for <coughs> me, but I appreciate the fact that he wasn't stifled. Okay? Because that, that is done elsewhere. Appreciate your leadership style. Like, like that, it man. speaks a lot about your leadership, for sure. Mm -hmm. He's a little strong and deep in my business. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Do you want to look at the overview at all before you get off the budget topic? Well, we can talk about it more if you'd like. Well, well I, it's not final. You well, let's, let's do this rather than do that. Let me get through my, my because okay. we'll, I, I've got some polls I want to put in front of the yep. board for, for being ahead. able to do that. Well, just we'll do the warrants and it's part of my TA report. Yep. Okay. Hey, make a motion to put the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Here report. Budgets and budget cycle and getting things ready for town warning tour meeting just where kind of what Tina was going. Um, <coughs> currently we have a road acceptance hearing um, for Gallery Lane on June 14th at 4 p.m. Um, what I'd like to propose for you guys to take a look at the final budget is to come back here at 5 p.m. And, and sit down with everybody again, and you'll have the final budget numbers. Tina will be able to take everything that you, all the input that you guys put tonight, and, you know, increasing everything, getting everything set. Then you guys can take your final look at it and say yes, no, maybe, or whatever, so that then we have the final budget numbers so that we can put the town report together so that we're able to do that. The other thing that we've been working on um, with everybody, the PD, the nephews, is the 
and um, Jim Levinsky from Housing Vermont is the Parks Vermont plan for across the street. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie to you because there there will be some cost to the town to do that. I don't have good numbers for you yet, um, but the engineer, myself, and Todd are going to sit down um, this week and put those numbers together. So we still have that parking lot to think about um, for construction and final um, for two weeks now. So that'll also give me time to do that. I should have, oh, I, I already have a, a rough um, memorandum of understanding between us in housing or Lamoille housing to be able for the board to review at that point in time too because we are on a deadline to do that um by the 21st or the 20, yeah, 21st so it goes to the drb on the 22nd so that they can either approve the parking waiver for that project or not so i, I think it would really be kind of handy to have that one additional meeting next week to iron some of that stuff out, um, and especially for uh, the finance department to get things done for the final budget so that I can write the warning. How much time is Mario about for that meeting of here? I, I think an hour to an hour and a half should do it. I mean, you know, you're, you're either going to, you know, you're either going to put some stuff in or you, you know, I think you have an idea what you like or what you don't like already. Um, and most of that's going to have to revolve around the capital budget and what we want to put into funds like that. Um, but that'll, that'll kind of be your, your final look at it um, to approve those expenses this, for that. The site walk scheduled for 4 o'clock, correct? Yes. It's not going to take us an hour. I don't believe so. So can we move? Is it possible for folks to be here for 4.30? I'm, no. You're, I've, I've I'm, a, I have a training yeah. at 6 o'clock that night. Well, I'm, I'm, well you, could, you could start at 4.30. I'll be here around 5 ish. What was the day again? The 14th. Is it the 14th? It's the 14th. 14th. Yeah. Tuesday. I'll, I'll make it work. I just it's an annual it's a, it's a mandatory training that I have to be at, so it starts at six o'clock and it's three hours. So but he's, if well, you we, go ahead and start at four thirty. Four forty five? I I'll be here about four forty five. Depending on the weather. You know, how long do you think it'll take you to put everything together for the budget? No, I mean, well, you... from what I'm understanding, though, there's only one figure. It sounds like that you guys really want to change that I've heard in the highway department, the bridge reserve figure. Yeah. Yeah. And is there anything else that you were thinking other than the two cents instead of the one cent? That's all I've heard so far. That's and then we'll have, we'll have parking lot. Parking lot will be added, but we don't know what that is. That will be hard to do. Will that be a separate article, Dan, or will that be I, I think it ought to be in the budget. Well, that'll yeah, be up to the board, but budget? my recommendation, well, it's up to you guys. What do you think, Brian? In the budget. In the budget. I think Eric? it's a budget yeah. only, yeah. Yeah. We could um, list it like we do paving. So it's not actually in the highway budget, but it's another line item in the overview. Right. If that would make it easier. I think we have to do it in the budget <coughs> because if we don't, <coughs> we need the taxpayers to really get our money. Maybe puts right. LHP's project in peril. I, I mm -hmm. think we have to do it in the budget in order for them to get the memorandum and agreement with us. Does right. it look like the budget increase is five percent? Four point seven at this point, without making the changes you've discussed tonight. Without changes to the grand list. Yeah, well, I don't know what the right. grand list is going to be. I think last year our budget increase was four. It was less than 4.7. Yeah. Yeah. This um, is the highest increase I think we've had in years. Years. But I mean, I when we remember. actually did the tax increase, the tax increase was 2% budget wise. One something. So. <coughs> I think so. Right. Uh, just, you know, there's always, budget doesn't always equate to what you're going to see as an increase in taxes. Right. right. Okay. I don't right. Right. That doesn't mean your tax is are going up 4.7%. Right. That's right. not what that like, means. We can't always right. predict the grand list, but we have made a lot of changes to the grand list over the last year, too. Could we, could we, could we get an idea of what the increase to someone's uh, property tax is going to be with the uh, increase in our taxes? I don't have any idea where the grand list is at. I couldn't begin to tell we, you. We won't know that until April. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't have to. There, there's no way to file the grand list before April. Right. But we can have an idea of what, what the increase is. <coughs> like, well, how much have you increased per 
for each and not each individual, well, but for hundred thousand or something like that. No, but you're gonna know. You can do it without the impact on the grand loss. Right. Yeah, we can. Yeah. With the current grand loss, you right. can. Yeah. Okay. But that's not accurate. Yeah. I don't like five percent. No. Yeah. Don't print five percent, Andrew. <laughs> this room will be seven. packed. <laughs> next I thought they just called freedom of speech here. <laughs> no rounding. But once again, you know that's that's kind of where we're at. You know, we'll we'll play with it and see what we can do again. We'll take a look at everything, see if there's anything that we can adjust on our end as well. Um, so uh, we'll take a kind of look at. Um, Kevin and I did talk to, to Tyler Mumley about the, the Mud City Loop Culver. Um, one of the things that was presented to Kevin was maybe the option, if you actually look at the culver, there's a large part of the culver that's actually in good shape. You know, a lot of it extends on the downstream side out. Um, so come springtime, we're going to see if we can't actually kind of move the road over and maybe open up one lane. Um, Tyler did not want us to do it in the winter because he's afraid of getting compaction and, and then just having everything fall apart. So we're going to see if we can, you know, if, when weather breaks, <coughs> depending on what the construction schedule, see if we can't open up, move everything over a little bit and open up one lane. We would like to keep that to just car traffic as much as possible, not tractor trailer traffic. So we'll, we'll, well, I've got an idea that folks up there would be very willing to police that themselves. Yeah. If we get one <laughs> lane yeah. Oh, yeah, leave you right out there with a the troll. So, I mean, it is... It's, Possible, you know, Tyler's been up to look with it. He was just, you know, with the depths and everything that we're dealing with, it, trying to do it in the winter, um, would concern everybody because it would be really hard to put it together and, and say that it'll stay where we put it. Frozen dirt's just not always a good idea. So, but we get into to May. There's, there's the real potential that we can move that over and open up one lane. Just make it a one lane through. We can sign it. And you can keep everybody down to one lane. Yeah, Weight limited so that we can keep the milk truck off of it. Yeah. <coughs> you know, our concern is it, it won't be the first car through. It'll be somebody that, you know, something will go across it, it'll fail, and then the next car coming through would hit it. You know, that's our big concern. You know, you just all of a sudden it won't be there. So, but there, you know, the, the downstream section of Culver is actually still in really good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. But we do need to move it over and just keep it to one lane. But um, still have the plan going forward to change it. Yes, you know, Tyler's putting together a proposal now. You know, he's, he's been pretty busy with everything else that we've been giving him to. Well, I'm sure we can done. really barrier that thing to, to make it too that's narrow a, for big trucks. Anyway. That's exactly what we were talking about, is putting yeah. Jersey barriers up you know, um, and, and keeping it narrowed down to, to so that the perspective is there that you can't get a big truck through it. It'd be nice to have an ambulance. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so Rescue truck. We did look at that, and I think, you know, just the, Tyler's worried about being able, with something that much depth on it, is getting the right compaction to say that it'll stay there. So. You put a sign-up travel at your own risk afterwards. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Doesn't make any difference. No. Yeah, no. We, we still have that risk. If we know it's not good, then saying, gee, you can go across it. We don't know if it's going to hold up for you. It's probably not a good idea on our behalf. Yeah. Well, just go fast. <laughs> it's the worst thing to do is put them down there. Yeah. Saying that, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's all I really have. It and I welcome back everybody from holiday break. Yes. The, the, we we'll just add one more thing. The parking meetings, the, the meetings that we've been having on the parking lot, going really well. We've done a lot of good input. I think right now we're looking a total of increase of forty some spots, something like that. Do you remember what the total was? Somewhere in there. We made a few adjustments, so. Um, yeah, so overall, I think we go from 85 <coughs> spots right now up to close to 120, 20. 100, and it was more than that. It was up more close to 120. Something Everybody's come into the meeting with good input, uh, and you know, it's been really, really productive, and it's been nice having everybody sit around the table to, to talk things out. So I was out of town for that meeting, unfortunately, but is that um, still the plan to get rid of my terminology, the concrete bathtub? Yes. That too? Yeah. And then, uh, we had a volunteer come in, a traffic engineer that's moved to the area and came in and brought some really, really good ideas to us. Um, just as a volunteer, saw the story in the paper and, and made some really good proposals. Um, so um, it, it really increases the, the capacity of the parking lot um, for the long term. So we Thank appreciate you. everyone's help getting involved. It's a big deal. Oh, it's a big deal. Good for everyone. That's it.
Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Is there going to be a uh, environmental evaluation for the parking lot renovation? What we're doing right now is it won't have to necessarily be um, a part of our cost. Is there's money available through the uh, conservation district in the area to do stormwater treatment? <laughs> so while we're taking out what I call the, the planter, we're actually going to put some underground stormwater treatment in there so that anything that comes off there, there's a catch basin right at the end of that right now. Where that catch basin is, the water will go to that and then it'll be treated before it leaves. And where will it go to from there? I'm sorry, it, right now it goes Where from the catch basin, does it go? Because right yeah. now it goes into the basement. Sometimes, yeah, the basement gets flooded, but that's I think the basement's getting flooded because the snow is being pushed up against the building on Hutchins Street. Okay, I've had to cut channels and the ice and stuff. I've talked to Doug about it already. Okay, we, we you just need to have that I, I think concrete the, off this, of it. Well, the storm stormwater goes into the into the set into the stormwater drainage all through town, right? Yeah, it does. So um, does I don't. Does that go right into the Lamoille, or does that go down to the? To the that goes to the Lamoille. No, none of the stormwater from that area goes to the sewer treatment plant. That goes it to the Lamoille. Goes into the Lamoille so the, the, the <laughs> parking lot water all drains to a catch basin out there. That's already in the in, in well, that the infrastructure is already in place. For right. We just need to put some treatment. In, in place to treat the stormwater before it goes to the river. There's a catch basin in between the two buildings that picks up what comes off the roof and yeah. goes. I know that's in good shape. What's um, that? That catch basin that, that's in between the two buildings. Is what? Is in good shape. Okay. Well, that's, that's, it, that's out of our right, right of way. We but. looked at that with David Ring a while back okay. and, and there were pro there's a problem with that. Okay. That it can be discussed further. Yep. Was, there were some issues with the whole alley, the way that some of the work had been done okay. um, by the by the people that are by the person that owned the building okay. adjacent. Was pushing water into our building. Right. I mean, literally a waterfall coming in when it rained. Um, that's remedied because I put the new foundation under the building. Okay. But it was. There's issues with water being forced into the building. Part of it is the, the Hutchins Street elevations have changed over the years, so it kept bringing the water. The, the pavement kept coming up, and that started pushing water over the foundation and over the sills of the building, and the sidewalk was brought up, and that pushed water over the sills of the building up on the Portland Street side. And that catch basin is not actually moving all of the water out of that alley and there's a lot of water coming mm -hmm. off those two buildings it's not moving all of the water down to the to the lower catch basin on, on portland and touching street that corner there so there's those are issues that are going to have to be addressed i i'm not as concerned with our building anymore because that's a that's a brand new foundation under that mm -hmm. it's it's not going to damage our building <laughs> I have a. I went. I went overboard with the footing on it. I put a 24 inch wide, 12 inch thick footing with a ton of rebar in it on the front. So that's, <coughs> and it's also got that fin coming out for the um, handicap ramp. Okay. So I don't. I don't think the water is coming in from the parking lot. Okay. At I, all. I yeah, but then the question is if they change the plowing mechanism because right now they plow it in a big pile and then take the pile away. If they're going to plow it and dump it on the Hutchins, oh, that's why they're not going to do that. If that was one of the questions. Up, was Hutchins. when you push push the snow over to Hutchins, is it just going to go over the bank? Or no, it'll drain no. back. Or it's going to get collected. It'll yeah. drain back to the catch base. Ah, okay. That's why those are going to be no. <coughs> the, plan, the plan is not to remove the snow from the parking lot down onto Hutchins Street, is it? No, no, no. 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 The snow will still be piled in the parking lot. Snow will still be piled in the parking lot. So in the so parking lot. Yeah. And then the, the catch basin and stormwater treatment will still be collected and yeah. kind of where it is now. Right. We can regrade yeah. some of that too. So yeah. there is a catch basin up there now that picks up the water. Right. So even right now, we collect all the snow right, not all the way to that end, but right there by that catch basin. As long as it, I had this picture in my mind that they were just going to 
taking that mountain of snow and so we no. dumping it on the Hutchinson. No, 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 our parking lot would look good, but the folks who's in Hutchinson Street would not be happy at all. You guys might be here the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, so, well, that's the reason why, you know, we, we will be you know, looking at the final parking lot plans next meeting and talking about that MLU because there's, there's timing on that so that I can get it, that done before the DRB meeting. So we're, we're on that meeting? That, that next parking lot meeting? Uh, that will be with the select board so we can present everything. Oh. Okay. Yeah, That'll be on the agenda. Yeah. That'll be another short one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that, actually no, that, I think it was, you know, it's it the 21st. Back, but I think everybody's been pretty good. 21st. Yeah. Is that a promise? Yeah. No. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a preliminary yeah. on the yeah, 14th. Yeah, well, I see you do that. Maybe. On the 14th. <laughs> that that way, any changes you make, we'll come back to you for the 21st. So, so there's some inquiries out here about the next meeting where this is going to be discussed. Yes, the 14th. 14th. Okay. 14th. I heard somebody ask when the next meeting was. So. 14th. Tuesday. Yep. That's a Tuesday. At 4.45. At 4.45. Thank you. All right. Next, select board concerns. Judy. Um, no. Chris. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> effective January 31st of this month, I am resigning from the select board for personal reasons. So as many of you know, I have adopted a daughter um, and I need to spend time with her. So I've appreciated my time. It's been awesome. Um, it's a difficult decision. I've had an opportunity to speak to Bob um, and uh, so Derek. Um, so finish up this budget season and I will be resigning. So. Nice. Congrats. Nice. <laughs> well, we haven't accepted that. Yet. <laughs> we get the vote. Yes. I didn't like hear me, I'm just floored. So yeah, I know. don't expect a response. <laughs> right. um, you're looking at me probably to figure out if something's wrong. Like I don't think so because I think petitions are due on the 27th. Too late. So he's not resigning until the 31st. Right. I can double check, but my understanding is. He still is on the. Petition. He's still on the board when. He's still on the board when the petitions are due. So therefore. What are the petitions due? The January twenty seventh. So. Um, I can do the twenty first. That, that was a question I was going to ask you, but I didn't get the chance to. It, <laughs> it's up to you know, to, to completely. I don't want to just so everybody understands right now. I think the best thing. If, if, we're just, we haven't really looked at it. If you resign on January 31st, then it won't be an open seat in time for it to be in a right position. Well, it would. But, uh, since we could write in the right hand candidate. Or we can appoint no, somebody. It won't, be, it won't be open to be the on position, the board. The position, the slot is not open. But we can appoint somebody. You would, I should, I should really verify what right. I'm guessing, my best guess is that if he resigns effective the 31st, it's not an open position on that day. Therefore, the select board would appoint somebody. Correct. Um, and it would be through, I think, another year following town meeting because there wouldn't be time for the voters to vote on the candidate. So you could so, do the day before. Well, the, the, let's say effective the 22nd, then that will give us through the next meeting. For the last meeting for the budget cycle. Yeah. Well, if we appoint him to appoint somebody to fill his spot, kill town meeting. Yeah. So we've done it in the past. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, appoint the town meeting. Yeah, I mean, you would if he if he resigns in January, you could appoint somebody to fill the time so through what? this town meeting if you do it. Before. So here's my, my point being, the budget, everything will be gone to print. We will vote and approve for the proposals to the, to the taxpayers. <coughs> that period between the end of January and town meeting is typically a time where we deal with all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of things but not necessarily Big things, yeah. grandiose, huge, large ticket items. Right. We wouldn't necessarily need to appoint to fill that. Right. Between then and town meeting, let the voters make a clean choice on candidates interested in running based on an election process versus our appointment 
Um, so that's all I'm saying. I like that better. Um, it'd be nice to have the voters pick somebody if there's enough time. Well, that's the thing too is getting the word. Yeah, out. that's the that's the the thing is is you know somebody that's interested in knowing that there's no conceit. But if yeah. Chris was to resign, pretty sure it'll be in the paper on Thursday. So. Yeah. 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 Probably not a problem. But we don't know he's going to resign yet. No. <laughs> People have not been knocking down the doors asking for petitions for a select board or a school board. Well, it's it is known that it's very hard to unseat an incumbent. That's a big part of the reason. That, that doesn't happen, but I do know people that are interested. But if Chris was to, if he was to resign on the 22nd after that budget meeting, then there would be time for him. There have, would be an open seat. Well, they can start the, it'll be, they can they start, start it. now. Sure. Well, it would right. be known sure. next I week anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I amended that to the 22nd. The thing the is there, there would be an open seat on, as of election day on that meeting. Right. So it would be for the remainder of, of your term, where sure. that's happening. We have another year. Of course, sometimes we want to get somebody with you. Yeah. I think so. It would be better to appoint somebody. Do you file a second? That's your turn. That's where you have that. It's not going to be popular. Okay. Just write a year stuff. One more turn and then. Okay. Well, Brian. I'm all set. Eric. All right, good as well. Thank you. And I just want to say that um, since Chris shared that with the public, mm -hmm. that um, I just want to thank him for all the work he's done. I, I'm, it's uh, been a pleasure to have him on the board. And I'm very sad to see him go because of what he's contributed to our board. And um, it'd be great to find somebody that can fill his shoes, but I, I appreciate everything he's done. Thank so, you. I want to see if I want to say that too. And when she gets a little older, you can come back on the board and come here with you. <laughs> Learn politics. She can do a dog park in Marine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I may ever choose a different project. <laughs> 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 yeah. When I learned when I learned Chris's uh, plan to resign, my wife right away said, "I'll watch her, so you can keep going to meetings." It's not that. It's um, he. I mean, I work either than that or work an hour away. It's just, right. It's tough. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. So now you can you can print it, Andrew. <laughs> What's next? Other business. Did I make a motion. Oh, no, Brian. oh, Richard. Richard. No, you're not resigning. Don't you start. No, I'm not resigning. <laughs> I do want to ask the board to consider I have a pile of your of the needs to consider a, you know, a position that we're going to need in the police department to partially fund it or partially budget it budget. for this next year. That way it would give theoretically a year from now. Yeah, I've been thinking about it, but you're right, it's good to have it. Yeah, rather than you know, do it all at once, phase it in this budget, the rest of it, the next budget. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just throw that into the budget, Tina, so that we'll have that for the overview and then the board can consider everything that's there. Half police officer. Good job. Well, part that works real hard. <laughs> yeah. The reality is, it's going to be pretty difficult to fill that position anyway. Right. Just give us some training to work on. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I'll jump back out and just say, based on that conversation, not for this, this budget we're talking about for, for a 2021. But probably in similar timeline with the police department addition, we need to really seriously look at our highway departments. Bill of your town for both, whatever we're looking at, but it's <clears throat> using the infrastructure from the highway department side because that is the core of what our taxpayers see their tax dollars going for. They don't see a lot of the stuff that we do with their tax money because it's paying insurance bills and all that other stuff. They see the highway department, they see the roads, the sidewalks, the trash cans, all those little things in their budget that hugely impact the status of our community and on our taxpayers. So they are getting by. They're tired. I mean, look at Kevin. No, I mean, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> he just started. <laughs> Pick on Kevin. <laughs> it is 
is a yeah. it is a manually doing 14 miles of sidewalk with one person and one machine. It is a daunting task, and they try and do it twice per storm. Incredible, uh, but it, it's it's uh, yeah. we we've got to continue to increase our infrastructure in order to support the growth of our community. And we're trying to do it responsibly, but be prepared for me to advocate for that next season. You may not now. No. I know. I know. Of course you will. All right. We'll make a motion that we find that premature general public knowledge of labor relations of employees of the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Motion and second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Make a motion in our executive session to discuss labor relationships with employees under the provision of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes yes. to include Town Administrator Dan Lindley. Oh, okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So far. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Chris, can I get a cigarette?